This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Okay, so we've heard about this term confirmation bias. It's what happens when we seek out information that confirms what we already believe. And it's what's happening to many of us when we log onto social media or read the news. Most of us follow, listen to, or read news from like-minded people and organizations we agree with. The problem is it creates an echo chamber where our beliefs are continually amplified and reinforced by continual repetition of our existing perspective. Basically, we end up clinging to our beliefs even more strongly and become further cut off from contradictory info or perspectives no matter how legit. And this can be dangerous because it can distort reality and create division and polarization. We all end up further away from accessing, much less accepting opposing viewpoints. And algorithms make it even worse. They continue to show you what it knows you want more of, creating what's called a filter bubble, making it even harder to discover new perspectives. One way to combat this echo chamber effect is to diversify your media diet. Follow and listen to people you disagree with, especially about complicated or hot button topics. Get comfortable with nuance. Check multiple news sources. And most importantly, remember that just because you want something to be true doesn't mean it is true. This is Sounds Good. I'm Brandon Harvey, and today our guest is Harleen Carr, co-founder of Ground News, a news comparison platform that promises to burst your filter bubble by offering news for people from all political ideologies. Before launching the company with her brother, Sook Singh, she worked as a NASA engineer and later a VP at Rolls-Royce. Ground News has a website, app, browser extension, and newsletter that aggregates news from more than 50,000 publications and social media trends and presents how both sides of the political aisle are reporting on it. I got to talk with Harleen about our experiences with confirmation bias, how each of us can actively work to be better media consumers, and why being thoughtful about the way that we consume the news is helpful to us as individuals and to the world. With that said, let's just jump straight into this conversation. From the top, I think that we should start by saying that I think that media and journalism is incredibly important and and probably listeners to the show feel the same way. The work that journalists do, uncovering the truth, holding the powerful accountable, and communicating information is what allows us to live in a relatively safe and fair world and fight for a safer and fairer world. But of course, we know that no institution is perfect. And also, the ways that we now consume the news has changed really quickly and not always in the best ways. And we've definitely seen the problems that come out of that. Harleen, I know that you've been up close and personal with all of these tensions. Can you tell me about the problem that you saw in the media and why you decided to do something to help solve that problem? Yeah, you described it very well, Brandon, why why news is so important. And and it's undisputable that uh, there are a lot of issues with news right now, especially how we're consuming it. So I think everybody knows what those issues are, like misinformation and clickbait and sensationalism and the things that you keep hearing again and again and quote-unquote fake news, which has been very politicized uh, right now. And the main reason that we think that this has all come about uh, is actually uh, because uh, how news publishers uh, started to monetize news and how they started to monetize news when news hit the internet was uh, through advertisements. So you need 
a consumer to click on a news piece before you can get their ad dollars because people stop paying for news through subscriptions. So how do you get people to click on a piece of news? And that is by making it sensationalized. That's by making it clickbaity. That's by making it something so interesting that that it's not just sounds like plain boring facts. So that is kind of the issue that that is manifesting itself in various forms um, in the news consumption today. And then to just exacerbate the problem, it's the consumption of news on social media. And that is a second layer of advertising that's, that goes on top of it. So if those of your listeners who have watched the, the recent documentary on Netflix called Social Dilemma, it's pretty yes. scary. <laughs> it's pretty scary. I'm laughing at it because that's the only response I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh so that we don't cry. <laughs> that, that, that's it, right? And and it's, again, what they're sharing is nothing new to us, but it's it's it was a very well put together documentary and just, just distilled it to, to show that the social media platforms, their only goal is to keep you on the platform as long as possible. So they will keep serving you what you want to read and then send you down these rabbit holes so you spend more and more and more time so they can make this advertising dollars off you. And then again, what, what are they going to serve you? News that you kind of agree with, news that, that, you sound, uh, that sound interesting to you. Um, it's not in the best interest to serve news that you might not disagree with or that sounds plain boring and you might close the app. So, yeah, that's, sorry, my very long-winded answer <laughs> to the problems in news today. No, I mean, that's something that I have definitely experienced and felt at Good, Good, Good. Listeners will know we've got an Instagram account and we share good news stories on it every day. And unfortunately, some of our most viral posts end up being the things that it's not the best news in the world. It's just the thing that's maybe the most controversial or the most salacious or like it's the most... It's going down a particular trail, but that's what's going to perform better in the algorithm because more people are getting riled up. And fortunately, we have this incredible community who cares about the deeper, messier, more real good news that we share and and they help balance that out. But that's we're just really lucky to have a really incredible community. We're also lucky to have a print publication where people are saying, I believe in this, I'm going to buy it before they read any headlines. So we don't we don't ever advertise what the headlines are in the newspaper or sometimes not even what the theme is before we put it out there. And so we're also able to kind of combat some of this uh, in that way. But a little like preview sneak peek is that in 2021, we're planning on relaunching our website with a lot more web content. That's awesome. And so this That's is something awesome. that, well, it's awesome, but it's also like, we've got to now figure out this, this situation. You know, how do we make sure that we're getting people to the site, getting people engaged with these good news stories, but without falling down this same path? And I can see exactly how easy it is, not even being manipulative, for or not even trying to be manipulative, at least, for publishers to uh, create a little bit of bias in the way that stories are told just to make sure that they can pay the salaries of their team and pay for office space and everything else. Yep. Yep. No, that, that is it. And, and it's, it's amazing that the community that you talked about, and I think that has to be the solution, right? People looking for a solution, actively looking for a solution, believing in something and then paying for it uh, up front. And, and that's got to be the way. And yeah, and this, that's exactly a uh, very, very, I think our missions are very overlapping uh, with your community and Ground News community as well, because uh, people come to Ground News. Uh, again, we uh, I didn't even describe what we do. We take the same piece of news and show you how different sources with very different narratives are covering that same piece of news. And what we do is challenge people to look at the same piece of news from a very different angle than you would have normally looked at if you only read a one source or one single news source or a couple of news sources that are very similar to each other. And by challenging your perspective, we want to give you the full picture news. So again, you don't end up in that filter bubble, which is so very dangerous. I personally am a huge fan of Ground News. That's why we're talking because I've been uh, just a big fan of the work that y'all do for uh, quite some time now. And I agree that we've got a lot of overlap in our communities and the things that we care about. The work that y'all do is is really fascinating because you help people understand their blind spots. You help people understand issues more fully. And 
here's the hard part. A lot of times when I think about fake news, when I think about misinformation, I think about the people I disagree with. And, and yeah. I, I'm yeah. in my it, mind, it, I'm thinking it's only human, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, they're so dumb for falling for this. Why aren't they paying attention to everything? But I have found it more helpful to instead of focusing on the failures of the people I disagree with, to look at my own problems, my own blind spots. And so I kind of want to ask you, you know, tell me about your own personal approach to uh, helping overcome blind spots, you know, knowing that to some level, the news that you're consuming is going to be biased in some way at a default, just because of, like you said, the way that algorithms work. How do you actively combat that? What does your kind of day-to-day news routine look like? It's interesting. I think my day-to-day news routine is what led to ground news. So what I was doing was, uh, and and it's funny, and this is kind of uh, how I grew up watching news. So uh, when I was young, uh, my dad used to have a cable news bundle and uh, we would listen to CNN, we would listen to Fox, we would listen to, but then he would go to these other uh, international news sources like Al Jazeera or Deutsche Welle or uh, South China Morning Post. And I grew up kind of like switching in between channels and hearing different narratives. And it's al- always made me curious that, uh, that, how different they are, right? And back in the day was the same advertising model that existed. So what I started doing was mimicking that um, and opening 10 different news windows to try to see, say, I'm reading a news about Iran and I'm cu- I'm curious and I, I'm trying to see, okay, this is how international media cover it, uh, covered it, but I wonder how uh, Iranian media is covering it. And it's not just Iranian media that is, say, the mouthpiece of the government, how is the alternative Iranian media covering it? So what I found myself doing was like opening 10, 10 browser windows and spending a lot of time trying to consume news. And that's, that was kind of the origination of Brown News that, hey, what if somebody did that work for you? And we <laughs> showed you all the relevant news sources and say, hey, this is how this same piece of story has the most diverse na- narratives. And I think it's that, as you said, like it's very easy for us to think that whoever we don't agree with is at fault, right? It's the human nature. Like I must be doing it right, but the other person uh, is wrong. So I think challenging yourself is very, very hard. But what we at Ground News are doing is at least make it easier. So uh, say it's a, a political story in the U.S. Our news sources will vary from very far left from, I don't know, something like Mother Jones or uh, Jalopnik or uh, HuffPost to to further along the spectrum. Then in the middle, we'll have some some news wire service like Reuters or, or NBR and then further out and to all the way to something like Breitbart and Epoch Times or Gateway Pundit too. And just to expose my own bias, a news site that I would normally never, ever go to just because I, I feel like it's very hard for me to be able to read news there but because we have it available on the fingertips i can quickly scroll across and see okay i wonder what spin did they put on this news or what part did they exaggerate it or what part am i missing as i said just acknowledging my own bias that uh, what am i missing that i wouldn't have been able to consume uh, on my end of the spectrum so yeah i think we all need to do that it's it takes work but in this world where we've all gotten used to everything being reduced to a tweet and TLDR versions of everything, uh, it's more work to do that. But I think that's the only solution, right? It's now now there is a whole movement of mindfulness and, and putting more thought into how we do things. And I think this has to translate to our news consumption as well. Sometimes the issues are just not not straightforward enough to put it in three lines. You have to read different perspectives and wrap your mind around it to understand what's really going on. And I will say, you guys do make it really easy. I mean, I just get an email a few times a week from y'all that just says, hey, here's the things that were probably in your blind spot that you missed this week. And I go, oh my goodness, I didn't even see this in my regular <laughs> news consumption. And I'm already... And to be honest, even I missed a few of those. <laughs> which, is, which, is like, which makes me think that, yeah, we are doing some, something right here. It is work. I don't think it's as much work as you're saying it is because you guys make it so easy. It's probably work for you, but it's not work for me uh, because you make it easy. But but why do 
we do this? What is the upside of being thoughtful and mindful about the news we consume? Why is this good for us? Because it's not just to... I mean, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel kind of like brag worthy when I do it. But but there's more to it than that. What's the real upside? And, and how is the world a better place when everybody's more mindful and thoughtful about the news they consume? Yeah, I, I think by consuming news from different perspectives, one, I think more you're more in, aware of what's really going on. So to give you a typical example, in 2016 elections, a lot of people who were who were just consuming one side of news did think that election results were going to be what they ended up being, right, till the race was announced. And, and then that just caught, caught people blindsided. And a lot of people are like, how did that happen? I would have never thought that. So but if you were to be reading the media, uh, again, the news sources from the other side, you would have anticipated that you would have been able to talk to people. Things like, to give you a concrete example, I don't know, some people, like, I personally couldn't understand, like, why would Hispanic voters vote for Trump or or certain uh, certain ethnicities? And what you have to do is, again, read news from their perspective, from those sources, and understand, yes, that makes sense. Why would that happen? And that would help you not just educating yourself, that is, again, broadening your mindset and and then understanding what's going on in the world before it's like right in your face and it happens, but also to be able to get along with people, right? I think we need to make the world safe for differences. We have arrived at a point where like, okay, I don't agree with you and I'm just, it's probably better that we don't talk to each other because it's easier that way. So I think we are shying away from discourse and that cannot be the answer, right? If I read the piece of news from your perspective, then at least I'm capable of having that conversation with you and say, okay, I see where you're coming from. You read X, Y, and Z facts, whereas I read A, B, and C. So let me tell you about A, B, and C, and I understand you X, Y, and Z, and let's have a conversation about it, and, and which is very, very important, right? Um, to bring people together and, and yeah, make it a better place for, for everybody. I am... Loving this conversation. I think this is all so wise and thoughtful. And uh, I'm just reminded of the ways that I need to just continue to be intentional about this and that it matters. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Harleen is sharing the three things that you need to do every time you consume the news. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Sounds Good is sponsored by Libro FM. Libro FM is the company that lets you purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore. I was actually already a Libro FM subscriber before we partnered with them. And in addition to getting access to more than 150,000 audiobooks, I also get to help a small business I care about keep its doors open. As a special offer for Sounds Good listeners, Libro FM is offering two audiobooks for the price of one with your first month of membership with the code GOOD. I have been on an absolute audiobook kick over the last year, and right now I'm listening to and loving The Dead Are Arising, a fascinating and award-winning biography of Malcolm X. To be honest, it's probably a bit too dense for me to read in print, and so the audiobook has been super helpful. I'm also listening to Big Friendship, which is an incredibly creative and thoughtful audiobook about friendships and how we keep each other close. If you want to check out these books or if you've got other audiobooks you want to dive straight into, all you have to do is visit the website libro.fm. That's L-I-B-R-O dot F-M and use the promo code GOOD to get started with two audiobooks and to help support this show. Sounds Good is sponsored by BetterHelp. Right now, we are all going through collective trauma. Plus, we're all still working through interpersonal relationships and life struggles. You need someone to talk to. I know that I do. BetterHelp is the solution. BetterHelp makes it easy to get matched with your own licensed professional therapist. 
Plus, it's affordable. All you have to do is answer a few questions and they'll get you matched and ready to start in under 48 hours. BetterHelp is offering a special offer for Sounds Good listeners. You get 10% off your first month when you take your quiz to get started at betterhelp.com slash good. That's betterhelp.com slash good. One more time, that's betterhelp.com slash good. All right, Harleen, I am trying to be a more thoughtful news consumer heading into 2021. I know that many of our listeners are trying to do the same because we know that it matters. I know you have three things that you want each of us to do every time we consume the news. What is the first thing? The first thing is, uh, I think, read the article. I think it's the most obvious thing to do, (laughs) but all of us are guilty of not doing it, right? Again, going back to the sentiment of everything needs to be reduced to 240 characters. I can't be bothered to read the whole thing. So uh, read the article because I think people mindlessly just consume uh, just the headlines. And in the sensationalist and clickbaity world, uh, the news actually might be very different in the article itself. So that's the first thing. The number of times that I have been talking with a friend and I said, okay, so I read this article. Oh, wait. Okay. Actually, I just read the headline, but here's what I think it said. Uh, (laughs) I've caught myself doing that too many times. Yeah, it's easy, right? We are very busy people. And and I think there's so many tools out there, not, not to criticize them, but things that... There are newsletters that distill things and and uh, do like productivity tools out there. But but sometimes I think if you really know want to know about an issue, then read the whole article or listen to it. I think that's another way if you want to do it while you are taking a walk or or I don't know exercising or doing whatever to then listen to it. That is perfect. What is the second thing that we always need to do when we're consuming the news? Second thing, I think it's what we do at Ground and make it easier for you, but you, uh, we would love for you to try out Ground, but you can do it without our help as well, is look at an opposing viewpoint to what you're reading. Again, as I said, it is uncomfortable, and it, what I'll try to do is find an exact opposite publication. So say it's a biased publication, if it's left, read right, if it's right, read left. If it's an international news, read the local perspective. And then, yeah, I think uh, reading very opposing viewpoints is uh, is definitely going to give you a better picture of what's really going on. And for people who, you know, maybe have a few of their favorite news sources or they find that they're consuming maybe news from the same news sources again and again, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But it's helpful to become informed about where kind of on the bias spectrum that news sources. And uh, Ground has this really cool browser extension that I highly recommend that will basically just tell you, here's the opposing source. Here's here's another article from a different perspective. And it helps you balance that really naturally. Yeah. I And, and, and just to elaborate on that, Brennan, uh, the browser extension is totally free. You can install it and go to any new site to your favorite news site and it, it'll just show in on the top and other viewpoints of this article that you're reading. So it makes the work much easier for you. And it kind of uh, helps you in your social media consumption as well. So uh, every time you come across a piece of news on social media, we'll say, hey, right next to your likes and comments that there are other perspectives to this news that you just come across on your Reddit or Twitter or Facebook feed. And speaking of social media, what is the third thing we need to always be aware of when we are consuming the news? I think, yes. Firstly, uh, unfortunately, if you are new consuming the news on social media, I think you have to be even more diligent. There are ads right next to the piece of news that you might be reading. So you have to differentiate between what's an ad and what's actually an article. Where did this publication come from? So be very, very careful. Was it created in Macedonia yesterday to publish (laughs) this piece of news? And there are loads of that. So yes, you have to be even more careful if you are. And more than that, I think uh, more than just you consuming before you share to be be that good Samaritan and not share things that would cause even further uh, disruption to everything that's going on. Please be more careful before you share. Just take at least a second. Um, I think even Facebook is putting finally some some checks and balances in place before people are, or Twitter is one of them, um, before the share. But yeah, I think taking that few seconds might stop the spread of something that's not 
And I think that a lot of us have maybe gotten in the habit of doing that with uh, traditional news articles like, oh, mm-hmm. I will read this, I will check this. But, you know, in the world of Instagram where anybody, good, good, good included, can make a beautiful graphic that explains a new story or in the case of me today, I saw this hilarious TikTok that was this commentary on a piece of news. And I was like, I need to share this on Instagram. But I caught myself right before I shared it. I was like, I need to just fact check this really quick. And it turned out that it was not fully true or it didn't tell the full story, which of course is not going to. It was a humorous TikTok, but it didn't yeah, tell enough yeah. of the story. And so I didn't share it. And I think that if we all get into the habit of not just doing that with news articles, but also all of the social media content that we want to post on our stories or whatever, I think that matters too. Absolutely. I think people need to act more like you, Brendan. I think that's that's my final advice. <laughs> <laughs> I've made that mistake way too many times uh, for people to try to act like me, but uh, I'm glad I caught myself today. <laughs> <laughs> this is seriously so helpful, Harleen. I'm loving all of these steps. I'm definitely going to do my best to follow them. It's the beginning of 2021. 2020 was filled with a lot of misinformation, a lot of media bias, Do you feel a little bit of a sense of hope about the future of news? Like, is there something that we can feel comforted by as we close out this conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Not just a little hope. I'm very hopeful. Um, I think, yeah, we all need and deserve a better year than 2020 was. I think 2021, uh, if anything, I think, it's highlighted all the problems there are uh, with news and bias and misinformation. And I think it's made people more aware. So I'm very hopeful that people are going to do more work and look actively for the solutions to become better news consumers in 2020. That's Harleen Carr, co-founder and CEO of Ground News. Visit ground.news to check out their reporting for yourself. On their website, you can also sign up for their newsletters and download their browser extension, the Ground News Bias Checker. This podcast was created by Good Good Good. At Good Good Good, we help you feel more hopeful and do more good. You can find more good news and ways to make a difference in our weekly email newsletter, our beautiful print good newspaper, and online at goodgoodgood.co. This episode was created by Kaylee Thompson, Megan Burns, Chad Michael Snavely, and me, Brandon Harvey. Please do us a favor by leaving a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. And when you find an episode you love, please share it on Instagram so that we can repost you. And with that, that is a wrap for this week's episode. Go out and diversify your media diet this week. And we'll be back next week with more good news and good action. Sound good?